Thank you, children. Thank you, darling. I know you children all relaxed back there, sitting back there, look at it, Bob. You think you're going to hear some jokes, don't you? Well, Mom don't know none. Mom don't know no jokes, but I can tell you some facts. Don't believe in them fairy tales in the first place. So don't look for none, because that Mother Hubbard going to the cupboard after dog bones and things like that, that never happened. Mother Hubbard had her gin in the cupboard and one of them squares. You know how your friends can come in, them chiselers and drink you up? So she used to tell them she's going to the cupboard to get a dog a bow. <laughs> she's going to get her a nip. Mother Hubbard was plenty hip, and you believe that. Mother said, wait a minute, honey. You'll have to laugh a little louder. Mom can't hear you up there. That's it. Thank you very much. See, I can't hear. Very good, Mom. Tell you how that happened. When they sent, when they sent for me to come down to Washington, they had some business they wanted me to tend to down there. They sent for me, sent me an airplane ticket. Now it ain't. I ain't scared of an airplane. I'm no square. But as you young children said, just never move me. You know, to ride in no airplane. Shown up. No sooner than I got in the plane, they strapped me down. The plane ain't got up no way it's hardly for something with glue up in my head like that. I ain't heard nothing since. Both ears stopped up. Oh, I was so sick. I said, honey, the students come to I said, honey, my ears is all stopped up. She said, here's some chewing gum. I showed that. That ain't unstopped them. I got right limp. I said, do something for me, honey. I'm dying. She said, drop your jaws. <laughs> and I misunderstood her. <laughs> they grounded me in Baltimore. Yeah, they, they took me off. But outside of an airplane, uh, Luther, uh, play that piano for him and tell him that number where it tells you about something else that mom don't have played. Go on, Luther, play it for him. Now, I guess everyone has their aggravations, especially in certain situations. Now, remember, I don't know what you children might be, but here's one thing that kind of aggravates me. For instance, company happened to drop in. Especially if they've been drinking too much gin, I say, now listen, if you're my friend, don't sit on my bed. Oh, now don't get me wrong, it's not that I think that your clothes ain't clean. And you know, Mom, I ain't never been mean. But there's a chair. Sit there. Uh, don't sit on my bed. I always was taught that chairs was made to sit in and beds was made to sleep. You're liable to get my blanket out of line. Or rumple up my sheet. Oh, it's not that I think that it looks so hot. But it's mine, and it's all I got. In fact, I don't care if it ain't nothing but an army cot. Uh, don't, don't sit on my bed. Mattress start to getting all lumpy. Springs won't bounce no more. Sides will start sagging, and slats fall on the floor, and you know that's a drag. Then you go home feeling all happy and everything and leaving me with an aching head. Listen, Ben, if you're my friend, uh, don't sit on my bed. In other words, don't crouch on the couch, son. I don't like it. <laughs> 